Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Rahana. We're playing more Gakko in Heaven 2. We're continuing from the exact place we left off last time. This is the scene where Adata and Yuki are going into town to buy ferret supplies. And this has just concluded the scene where they're walking along the school path and talking and Yuki's being all annoying and asking Adata all sorts of personal questions about the way he speaks and stuff like that. And now we're going into town. So there's the bus doing bus stuff. Ah, it's kind of been a long time since I've been out in town. Something's getting blown by the wind. And this is actually one of those key scenes that you can get when you talk to Keita and you pick a specific person. Um, in this case, when we talked to Keita and asked him for advice, we had Yuki um, think an artist when it came to his um, MVP battle partner. So now we're getting Iwai's little scene, um, the artist from the original game. So he's saying, oh, something's getting blown by the uh, wind. Kami? Kore... It's paper. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's a drawing. It's really good. And then there's this one and this one. Their sketches are rough drafts. They're all of the people who are walking by. And even of the town. Who drew this? Looks like it's that person over there. He's gathering up some other drawings. I wonder if he's an artist. Excuse me, these blew away too. I've done a good deed. And now I have to follow Arata-san. Arata so, again, um, you won't get to see whatever the scene is here, but you will encounter that person, and if it's the first time you've played through and unlocked that scene, you'll get a little pop-up in the middle of the screen telling you that a new scene is available and you have to go into it from the menu and pick um, from the, the special area. It's uh, Professor Ito's uh, special someone and then you can watch the different scenes that are associated with him. So as you play through the different character routes, you'll collect them all up. Yep. No pop-up for us because uh, our game's completely unlocked, but don't be surprised if something like that comes up. And here's Yuki just making a little effort noise here. <sighs> he didn't just buy food from Otto, but a mountain of potty pads and stuff like that, too. This must be why he said okay to going together. Otto san said he'd help carry the bags, too, but since I said I'll, I'll do it, I have to carry them myself. <sighs> it's hot. And I'm hungry. You can't stand it? Hi. Right. <laughs> Stay here for a minute. I'm going into this building to buy some stuff. Hi. Right. What is he buying? I hope it's not something bulky. Anything heavier would be a bit much. I'm hot. So keep in mind that Yuki is kind of a weakling, so having him carry a whole bunch of stuff is probably not the best idea. I mean, it probably would be awkward for Adata to carry a lot of stuff by himself, but keep in mind that he's pretty strong, so there wouldn't be any problem with him just hauling around whatever he needs to buy today. Hi. Here you go. Ah. Uh. Oh, welcome back. Wait. Ice? It's ice cream. There's two cups, a big one and a little one. And there's two scoops in the big one. I ended up getting the little one when I bought the big one. They were having a promotion and it was free. Oh. I can't eat this much, so you have it. He's giving me the big one. Oh, Thanks. I can eat this? Ice. 
溶ける。Hurry up and eat it. It's melting. はい、いただきます。Right, here I go. うん、冷たい、甘い。It's cold and sweet. 緑のはチョコミントですね。それと、このイチゴのはチーズケーキの味もする。The green one's chocolate mint, right? And the strawberry one tastes like cheesecake, too. Arata san no nan desu ka? What did you get, Arata san? Yogurt s h e r b e t Just yogurt sherbet. <laughs> And remember, Maro likes this, this kind of stuff. We saw him earlier licking yogurt and、uh, attempting to、uh, get those kinds of things before, so of course he's going to be interested. Maro mo o i s h i s o ni n a m e t e r e Maro looks like he's, he's enjoying licking it, too. でもそれだけでいいんですか俺のも食べます But are you okay with just that? You could eat mine too. いらない。一個で十分。I don't need it. One scoop's plenty. はあ。Well, even though he said when I bought the big one, I guess he bought this one for me. So, I don't know, not really expecting to、uh, get something for himself, I guess. So he really did go out of his way specifically to get something for Yuki. He did not buy the big one and get the small one as a freebie, you know, intending to give the freebie to Yuki. He went to buy the big one, didn't have any expectation of getting anything extra. It was delicious, thank you. I'll go throw it away, so give me your trash. Oh, is that a scratch card you're holding? It came with the receipt. You're going to throw that away too? Maybe you won something. I never win these. If I'm just going to be disappointed by losing, I'd rather not do it. Losing. Anyway, it's just a lottery to get you to buy more from them. There's no winners. So, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much how scratch cards work. They just trick you. They're like, look, you have a chance of winning a brand new car. Like, have you ever gotten those things in the mail? Where it's like, scratch this off and see what you won from our dealership. And of course, it's always like, you won a million dollars off a, a brand new car. And I'm like, yeah, but if you actually try to redeem it, it doesn't work. It's nonsense. I guess that's a little different than scratch cards where just nobody ever wins anything, as opposed to ones that always say you won stuff that you can't actually redeem. But you get the idea. Arasha knows that this stuff is crap. So, t h e t i r e s Still, there is a winner. Can I try it? Suit yourself. Yeah, of course. If you hand it over to Yuki, what do you think is going to happen? I wonder what I'm going to get. It's a winner. It's a coupon for two free ice creams. No way. It's true. It's true, look. Two ice creams, size and type are up to you. It even says a king size is okay, which of course is extremely important to someone like Yuki who wants to eat as much as possible. It's amazing. That's so generous. Not that. You really are lucky. It wasn't me. Huh? Well, this is the card that you got. So you're the one who's lucky. Huh? So next time, let's eat it together again. I'm not going. Huh? But you won the coupon. If you want it, you can have it. I don't feel like coming with you again. So this won't work. So I like this, this little hint that, you know, you, you kind of knew that he, he was using this coupon as not necessarily a thing to manipulate Adata, but as an excuse to hang out with him again. So that won't work. Yuki. 
はい俺にこれ以上つきまとうな So of course change in mood calls for a change in music You can tell there's something serious going on here Don't follow me around anymore つきまとってるわけじゃないですけど I'm not really following you around なんでそんなに俺を避けるんですか Why are you avoiding me like this? ユキお前はベルワンに勝った You won the bell one BL 学園の生徒会長としてみんなの信頼を勝ち取ったんだ You won everyone's trust as the student council president はい Right? お前はみんなから期待されてる Everyone has expectations of you それなのに俺なんかと一緒にいたらお前の評価が下がるだけだ And this is just sad as hell If you're with someone like me, you'll just lower your worth そんなみんなが何を言おうと俺は No, no matter what anyone says あの噂本当だから Because that rumor is true So Yeah, more truth bombs being dropped here. And, you know, even though Arata is basically trying to push Yuki away here, he's, he's really opening up to him. So it's very mixed signals here. Like, he wants Yuki to know things about him, and I think he wants to be accepted. But he also wants to push him away, not only for his own good, which is sad that he feels that way. But also to kind of protect himself from the idea of being rejected by someone. Because at what point is Yuki going to become like the swim club members and decide that Arata is no good and push him away? He must be thinking that because those people accepted him and they thought he was great and they talked about how he's the swim club's hope and all that stuff. And then a rumor comes out from people that they didn't even know. And suddenly they're rejecting him. So even though Yuki has been so adamant about, I don't care about that stuff and I want to be friends and I want to know more about you, I'm sure in the back of Arata's mind, he's thinking, you know, at what point is he going to change his mind and reject me? So let me reject him first. Why is there a horrible, really close plane noise outside? Wow. Okay, that's kind of scary. Um, I guess I'll wait till that goes by because I can't really hear what I'm saying, so you probably can't hear what I'm saying. Sorry about that. I don't know what is going on up there. I don't see anything outside. Anyway, that was spooky. So, that rumor's true. When I was in middle school, I had a relationship with a senpai in the swim club. A relationship? And this is like the worst line in the entire game. Jesus. Okay. It was more or less a consensual relationship. Which means it wasn't. A consensual relationship? Arata-san. みんなにバレた Everyone found out about it. 問題になっていつの間にか俺が先輩を誘ったことになってた It became a problem and before I knew it the story had become that I'd seduced my senpai いつの間にかって本当はどうだったんですか Before you knew it but what really happened <laughs> Before he knew it that's how things had become Then it must not have actually been like that. Is that what his senpai told everyone? Arata-san, did you like him? Not really. Even though you didn't like him, it was the same for him. He didn't force me into a relationship because he liked me. You were forced? So, yeah. I mean, that really says it all. 
So you start to understand what's going on here. Senpai ni totte. Ore wa tada. Namaiki na kouhai. To my senpai, I was just a cocky underclassman. Kiniku an kara tsubushitai. He wanted to crush me because he couldn't stand me. Fumi ni jitte yaritai. He wanted to trample me underfoot. Sore dake da. That's all. So I wonder if it had something to do with he just didn't like Arata's personality, or he couldn't stand that Arata was more talented than him. Which, of course, you can see as being a problem. So, if you're thinking about this and it's someone who was older than Arata, then this happened. Gosh, okay, since Arata's in his second year of high school. He had to be at most second year middle school in order for there to be someone older than him, a third year. So it's been at least three years since this has happened. So he's been dealing with all the leftover bullshit from what this guy did to him for at least three years. This, this feeling that, you know, basically being used, being forced into a, a relationship. And having everyone find out about it and blame him. It's really no wonder that he feels like he has to have a derpy persona that looks harmless that other people won't feel threatened by. Because this guy obviously felt threatened by Arata and decided to hurt him to make himself feel better. <laughs> That's terrible. Is that why you said you can kiss anyone? While liking someone or while hating them, you don't need romantic feelings. So you can have that sort of relationship without any feelings. But was that really okay? You should have resisted or complained to someone and made them stop. I didn't feel like doing something so annoying. Annoying? Just a little bit. If I just endured at those times, then I could continue diving. It was easier to go along with it than going against it and making things worse. So the, the eternal plight of the bullied kid, if you complain to someone and no one does anything about it, or they just try to give the perpetrator a slap on the wrist, then things become much, much worse the next time no one's watching. And that's true. That's that's how bullies work. And also, you know, the mention of the diving. He wanted to keep diving. But not too long ago, when Yuki was saying something about how Arata likes diving, and he's like, you, you're just assuming that. You know, he's, he said something to Yuki, pretty much denying that he enjoys diving, that he likes it. He's like, don't don't assume that you know everything about me. So this seems to contradict what he said before about that, which was kind of curious. You're like, well, why is he diving if he doesn't like it? And then again, why is he saying that he wanted to keep diving? You know, putting up with being coerced into sex by another boy. We'll find out more about that. So... Um, I won't dwell on it because that question will be answered. Um, yeah, so easier than going against it and making things worse. No way, that was easier? I'm despicable, aren't I? No, but does he really feel okay with this? Isn't it too painful? I only want to do things like that with someone I like. 
But Arata san. Arata san. Nani? What? Arata san wa ima made dare ka o suki ni natta koto te aru n desu ka? Have you ever liked someone before? Wasureta. Sonna mukashi no koto. I've forgotten. It was a long time ago. Wasureta te koto wa. If you've forgotten, that means. Yoji wa kore de owari. So, just that little hint there, we get the feeling that there's more to this. So, just like if you've seen Tomo's route, how you just kind of keep peeling back the layers and you find more layers underneath, Arata's story is similar. You peel back one layer slowly, one at a time, and as you dig, you keep finding that there's yet another layer of basically crap underneath. As you're, you're digging through the story, trying to get to the person underneath and find out why he is the way he is. There's just, it just keeps going. It just, forget it. You don't even know how deep this goes. And you really get that feeling at this point. You're like, okay, we've discovered all these multiple layers of stuff. And it's like, there's another one still, at least one. Okay. I'm done with my errands. I'm leaving now. Yuki, stay away from me. I'm begging you. And just the look on his face as he says that, you know he doesn't really want that. But he is genuinely concerned for Yuki because the situation he's in now because of those kinds of associations, he doesn't want Yuki to end up being bullied like he was. He doesn't want Yuki to get pressured into doing things he doesn't really want to do because people decided that they didn't like him for whatever reason. Uh, Begging. Going, going that far. And all this time passes. Uh. It's no good. Arata-san hasn't said a single word after that. But me too. I don't know what I should say. And really, for someone like Yuki who has led that kind of charmed life where nothing bad has ever really happened to him because his luck protects him, he can't imagine what Arata is going through. All, all he can do is look at it and from the outside and see that, yes, this was wrong and why didn't somebody do something and, and feel that, that anger at that injustice? But he can't really feel it like someone who's been through something bad like that. So, yeah, um, that ends this day. And yeah, this is a pretty dark day. And this is not the darkest day in, in Arata's route, though this this feeds into other stuff that happened. I don't want to say too much and, and ruin it for us. Um, I tend to kind of babble on about spoilers, so I'm going to cut myself off and not allow that to happen, but um, we'll find out more about Arata shortly. Um, things, things are really picking up now. Um, still a lot more to go, so stick with me. Uh, it's kind of a slow build to the end, and uh, we're going to get there, so... Get your shovel and uh, help me dig through the crap. So uh, thank you for watching that very long video. I, I hope that was enjoyable, if not in the sense of the story that we found out, but the sense that we're making progress on Arata's story. So thanks for coming along with me, and I'll see you next time.